So I think we've covered this, how it works. It converts the chemical energy into electrical energy. When, those, when that solution reacts with the lead, it gives off an electrical charge. When you connect that in a circuit with a light bulb or a starter or something like that, it powers equipment. And so we're taking a chemical and we're turning chemical energy into electrical energy. We talked about these two items. Charging it pushes the SO4 back into the solution. When we're working with batteries and we're trying to decide you know, whether a battery is any good or not or if we should buy it, the biggest thing and the most important thing that you want to look at is the number of amps. And on the top of a battery, it should tell you how many cold cranking amps this battery is supposed to produce. This little battery here says 230 CCA. CCA is cold cranking amps. What that is is how many amps a battery can give off at zero degrees for 30 seconds. So if I took a load or a, a wire and I ran it from one side to the other and I measured the maximum of amps it can give off for 30 seconds, it'd be 230 cold cranking amps. And so what I'm looking for is amps. If I have a battery that's used and I want to know, if, you know, I just took this out of the mower out there, I want to know if it's any good. It doesn't seem to be charging or, or starting this machine anymore. Again, I need to check to see how many amps it can produce. And that's where I'm going to use a load tester. A lot of different load testers out there. This is just an example of one. What this is, has a big old coil of wire. It's just like a heater in your house. It's got a bunch of screen. That's to let the heat off. I'm going to take this load tester. I'm going to hook the positive to the positive terminal, negative to the negative terminal, and then I'm going to load it. And when I turn this dial, it turns a variable resistor, and I want to load this thing to half of the cold cranking amps, whatever it says on there. If it says 230, I want to load it to 115. So I'm going to turn this dial until this one says 115 amps. I'm going to look at my voltage, and my voltage has to be above 10 volts. So the pressure in the battery has to be above 10. If it doesn't, the battery has failed that test, and it will not work in an application. So you have to do one of two things. You recharge it, try to get the thing, the solution mixed up again, and then retest it. If it retests and it fails the second time, the battery is bad and it needs to be replaced. You take the battery out of your car because you think it needs to be warrantied, and you take it down to Napa or someone like that, they're going to take your battery and test it. This is what they're testing. They're going to put it on a load tester. They're going to see, does it fail the load test? Does it produce the amperage it's supposed to? If it doesn't, then they tell you, well, we got to charge it. We'll retest it. If it fails a second time, you get a new battery. If it doesn't fail, you get your battery back, and you have other problems. The other thing that you can do is check the individual cells. Each one of these individual cells has a solution of liquid in it. That solution is called electrolyte, and this is what it's made up of. It's 36% sulfuric acid, 64% water. So what I'm going to do is they have specific testers, which we'll go through. This is the little four ball tester. Yesterday's had how many balls? Five. Five. This only has four. So I'm going to put it down in there, draw some liquid up, and I'm going to see how many balls float. If four balls float, then it's a perfect battery, or the cell is fully charged. If it has three balls, it's 75% charged. Two balls is 50. One ball is 25. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each cell and check each cell. Now, this little test tester here costs about $3 or less, depending on how you do it. 